Hey, well, good morning, church. Morning. Somebody get excited about this weather, first of all. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Also, just excited to be here, excited to celebrate, excited to worship. Hey, will you guys stand as we begin worshiping? Yeah. 
how we've waited for this day. Lord, I thank you for today, for the beautiful weather. I thank you for this church and every, everyone who is here. Lord, how you have blessed us. You are so good. I pray that you would bless our worship, that it would be pleasing to you and bring glory to your name. Would you bless the service? Thank you for your provision. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Get out.
Amen. You guys may be seated. Well, good morning. I want to welcome each and every one of you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to a beautiful Sunday morning that God has given us one more chance while we are here on this planet to give God glory and praise and honor. Amen? Amen. What a great day to be alive and a great day to be a Christian. It really is. I tell you, there's no better life than living for the Lord. Amen? Uh, I want to invite up our quiz team and Miss Erica, one of our quiz directors. And they went to uh, Howell Water's Edge Campgrounds and had a quiz meet yesterday, the last of the season. And they've got some hardware this morning. Wow. All right. So this was our final quiz meet. Here, let's turn it off. Go ahead and turn it off. Okay, it's not here. All right. So final quiz meet and probably the closest one, thankfully. Um, like I've told you guys in the past, most of our quiz meets have been like two hours away, so it was nice to have like an hour. And anyone that's been out to the campgrounds knows that it's not um, an amazing day out there unless you go to Tomato Brothers, which we did. So um, it was a great day. Um, at our quiz meet, it covers uh, 20 different lessons, so um, it ends up being, I don't know the exact um, number of questions, but the kids have to know it's around 300, give or take questions, and they only ask 30. So it's um, each quiz meet presents its challenges. This one is probably the hardest because, because it covers so many uh, lessons, but our team did not disappoint. So. They did very well, and Brenna wanted to share uh, what everyone ended up getting. So, um, uh, Nolan got bronze, and Roman <laughs> and Roman got uh, silver. And Nora got uh, gold with one full round that she cor uh, answered all correct answers. <laughs> and then George, Silas, me, and Eva got all, all, all stars. So that means that we got all the questions right. Part of the competition as well is um, the the, each level has an opportunity to do our recite memory verses. So there are 20 as well um, that they have to recite. Now, when they go into the room, it's all at random. So yeah. you draw out of a cup and you have to say whatever number verse that, that you drew. So they had to pick um, three. And out of all of the red level quizzers yesterday, um, only three were able to recite uh, the verses that they pulled, two in which were from our church, so that's uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so that was Miss Eva and Miss Nora. Yeah. And then Eva, did you want to share a verse? Okay. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Amen. Awesome. Yeah. So pretty, pretty incredible. So um, lastly, another piece of good news from yesterday is uh, there is a regional quiz meet uh, you have to qualify for. So um, that is at Olivet in June. And um, there are five spots that are available for their level. Um, Rochester took four. Oh. So, um, so Brenna, Silas, Eva, and George all qualified cool. for yeah. regionals. So it was an incredible year for all of our quizzers. We are missing one. We're missing our sweet Audrey up here, but they all did such an amazing job. So make sure that you tell them um, how well they did and that you're proud of them. Of course, we always you know, thank you for your prayers, your support. Um, it means a lot to us. So in the time that the parents and the leaders invest in this. So it's, uh, 
proof that it, it's making a difference in the lives of these, these kids. Amen. And before you guys go, can I just pray with you while you're up here, pray for you? Yeah. Father, thank you for this incredible uh, ministry and these precious lives and these beautiful kids that you've entrusted with us. And thank you for the coaches and parents and leaders that have put this all together. And I pray, God, that uh, your word will never return void. But, God, it would plant itself deep in the hearts of these kids. That they would be encouraged and have something to draw from when the enemy wants to get at them. God, thank you for your word that's a living word that we hide in our hearts for when we need it the most. So God, encourage them, and I pray this will just be one step closer to more knowledge and uh, depth of their faith as they walk with you every step of the way. Bless them now in a great way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Way to go, everyone. Good job, guys. Way to go. Just phenomenal. While they're heading back to Kids Church, I want to remind you that uh, our spring flower sale and maple syrup sale is ongoing, and you have until next Sunday to get those order forms in, and there's forms in the foyer. Yeah, so make sure before you leave today, grab a couple of those and uh, get those in as soon as possible. Uh, all reports are that every, all the flowers that we have purchased throughout the years have been uh, beautiful, lasted for a very long time, and there's nothing really better than some pure maple syrup on your oatmeal in the morning. I'll tell you that right now. Hello. I got a witness out here in the front. I want you to remind you as well that Legacy Events on April 27th, we have a trivia night, um, trivia afternoon with lunch, starting at 11 o'clock in the, the morning. It's a Legacy Event, but everybody is invited. I am your quiz master. I am already preparing questions for you, so we want you to be a part of that. It's great to get together. It's a great ministry. Also, Women's Retreats happening May 3rd through the 5th at Water's Edge, a campground in Howell, Michigan. The theme is life is a journey, and it certainly is that. And so ladies, make sure you grab a flyer for more information. Sign up today. Uh, and help out the ladies as well if you tell us who you will be rooming with during the weekend. And see Colleen Cleveland and her wonderful team uh, if you have any further questions for that. Now, today is a very special day. You have been told about this, uh, a little bit about what's happening in the life of our church. But before I can talk about what's happening today and tomorrow, I've got to go back to what happened yesterday. Before I can tell you where we're going, I've got to talk a little bit about where we've been. And so if you'll just bear with me uh, as I kind of lay the story out a little bit about our church. It was back in 1999. The congregation had outgrown the old church building that was located across the street at 1520 Walton Boulevard. And so Pastor Crum and the church board then knew that they needed to look at other options. Do they move to two services? Do they look for another church building or do they look for property and build a brand new church building on that property? What happened next is really a true testament to how great God is because Pastor Crum inquired of a realtor as to how much the church property was worth. He was told it was worth about $900,000. Well, Pastor Crum thought that seemed a little bit too low and he felt that God impressing upon his heart that he should list the church property at $1.7 million and just see what God would do. And so that's exactly what he did. And God honored the prayers of the congregation. And the property sold for $1.6 million, which was $700,000 above its reported value. On top of that, the buyer told uh, Pastor Crum that the church could still meet there until they got their new building. And so the search began for a new church home. While looking for land to purchase for the new church building, the church board decided that they wanted to stay close to downtown Rochester, not move further away at the out, toward the outskirts of the town. And so they found a piece of property just down the street at 1799 Walton Boulevard. It was an old apple orchard that had a house and a garage and a barn on the property. And there was yet another hurdle, though, that would have to be overcome because the land was also being looked at by a local developer. And the local developer wanted this property to be zoned as industrial property. But once again, God had gone before the church and the city council voted to keep the zoning as residential land, which paved the way for the Rochester Church of the Nazarene to purchase it and begin building this beautiful church building right here at 1799. 
Pastor Crum would say that it was a whole church effort to get this church built. Many families gave, many sacrificed to make God's vision for our church a reality. A private donor from the congregation felt led by God to donate $60,000 of his own money to add on the kids' church off the gymnasium because he thought that the children needed their own place to worship the Lord. This is a church building planned by God built by God, and it's even covered in the Word of God. Before the carpet was put down in the building, the whole congregation wrote different scriptures on the floor in their department, covering the floor in God's Word. From kids' church to the kids' wing to the foyer, even right here in the sanctuary, up on the stage, scripture is written right now where you sit, underneath your feet and the carpet. It was on May 5th, 2002, that our church opened its doors for our very first service at our present location. The services were attended by our former Nazarene District Superintendent. The mayor was here and a local congressman who provided a flag that was flown at the state capitol was here. Reverend Crum served as the senior pastor for another 17 years after this church building was built. And so I think it's very appropriate this morning to honor Pastor Crum again and Ruth and their church boards for seeing God's vision and putting in uncountable hours of prayer and kingdom work to get us to where we are located today. Would you give Pastor Crum another round of applause? Amen. We know that God did it, but God accomplished so much through his willing servants, and Pastor Crum was a leader who led with integrity, he led with honor, and he led with godly character. And so we are forever in debt for his leadership of those years. But by 2015, following some very, we'll call them lean years, a turn in the economy took place, and we began to owe now on two different mortgages. And we found ourselves over a million dollars in debt. The money was not there to fund our ministries. So every ministry had to rely on fundraising to keep things going. It was a struggle to pay bills from month to month. So much so that your staff felt led to take pay cuts. To try and save as much money as possible to keep the lights on. While still doing full-time ministry. And for the next Several years, we saw abundant spiritual blessings, personal victories by the members of our congregation, but the church itself struggled financially because of the debt that we owed. In 2017, we re, with a renewed commitment to honoring God and to being good stewards of what God had given us, we launched a debt reduction campaign titled Unleash His Vision with a goal of raising $320,000. It was a three-year effort and although many families gave, they participated, they sacrificed, we did not quite meet our goal. The good news is that we were able to knock a chunk off of our debt, but as, of, as 2019 came to a close, we still owed over $700,000. And then 2020 hit. I was just a few months into my new position as your senior pastor when COVID hit everybody hard. And places of worship were forced to shut down because there was so much unknown. The shutdown forced our church to upgrade our safety measures to be sure, but it also forced us to adapt and move ahead in our technology upgrades. So we started to record services and devotions. We put them online to try to stay connected as a church body. We purchased a new camera and new software to help us with the quality of our online services. If you remember, we had drive through communion. We had several people felt led by God to deliver meals to families to get them through this time. I remember sending out several teams on Mother's Day to many of your homes to make sure that you got flowers. I, I remember I ended up in Grand Blank on that day to make sure that Lynette and Leona got their flowers. We also lost many members from our church family during this time too. And though we could not meet in person for a while, giving increased dramatically. Because of this, we were not only able to continue attacking our debt, but we were able to make upgrades to the church building. 
We painted bathrooms, we painted classrooms and the foyer, we put down some new flooring, we resealed the parking lot, we had insulation installed in several areas, and we had a portion of our roof replaced. Not only that, but we had the pleasure of having our Romanian brothers and sisters use our church for their services and special services, and they have been a tremendous blessing to our church as well. You will not find any more friendly, caring, and godly people than our brothers and sisters from the Romanian church. I promise you that. I felt led of God to open up our gymnasium during this time to our community to provide a place for our youth to gather and stay connected. This led to making several contacts with basketball and volleyball coaches who began to rent out our gym during the week, which provided our church a much-needed income and a new network of talented coaches and players. We were one of the first churches, if not the first church, to reopen, to begin having in-person services again. And I announced from this very pulpit that as long as I am here, we will never close our doors again. Because sick people and sinners and saints alike need the church. We've got to remain that lighthouse in the middle of darkness, telling this community that there is a place of refuge. There is a place to go. And we'll, we will have our doors open. And because of our decision to reopen, we met a wonderful group of people that were looking for locations to rent for a faith-based homeschool alternative. And so we partnered with High Point Hybrid Academy and Homeschool Connections, who use our building even now, this dur during the week. And I can't re recommend them highly enough to families who are looking for a public school alternative. Hundreds of families have been through our church and our facility. And it's been a joy to have each and every one of them. And through our partnership with the schools, not only have we created another stream of income, but their help, with their help, we have been able to replace another section of our leaky roof. We have updated kids' church. We've updated the teen room, installed a new gym floor and new hoops, been able to provide families with food and financial assistance, and they are currently spearheading even now a donation campaign to help us finish off all of the roof and steeple repairs, update our foyer, and to address our sanctuary lighting system. With all that taking place, it brings us to today. In church, I have in my hands here a copy of our satisfaction of mortgage paper. And I have in my hand here a copy of our term note, letting the bank know we're all, we're all paid up in full. And so I would like to just do this for dramatic effect this morning. Oh. <clears throat> Because today, through the goodness and blessing of God and through the generous and sacrificial giving of so many, it's my honor to pronounce the Rochester Nazarene Church as being debt-free. Praise God. <clears throat> and I say to God be the glory for great things he has done. We still have many things to accomplish. And to be very transparent this morning... I want to show you a working list of things that we want to address as we move ahead as a now debt-free church and ministry. We are going to be repairing the upper roof and steeple that will take place hopefully in June or July. We want to address the lighting system and the projectors in our sanctuary and the acoustics because these lights have been failing for many years and we don't know how much longer God's going to keep these lights on that we enjoy this morning. We certainly want to update our foyer with new flooring and new furniture, new fixtures, new paint. We've already met with a couple folks that are going to help us with that project. We want to update our bathrooms. I should say an amen from everybody here. <laughs> new flooring, sinks, countertops, all the good stuff. We need updates in our bathrooms. We want to look at combining the janitor's closet with that Sunday school room because, praise God, that room is crowded and, and booked. We need more space. That's a great problem to have, by the way, church. We want to look at combining the old library and the room next to it to open up a cafe area for our coffee club that will double as another classroom for teaching. We have two AC units that are down that need to be replaced. We want to replace our entry doors, which at this point are now old and out of stock and out of fashion, 
and put in some new security doors with some keyless locks entries. We have looked around the property. We need some help outside with our landscaping. And we have some lights outside in our parking lot that are out that need to be replaced and fixed. A few honorable mentions. We need to recarpet some rooms. We want to purchase some signage around our church building so people know where to go and buy some nice advertising boards to put in the foyer so we can display all the upcoming events. We want to remodel the fireplace room. We want to update our kitchen. And we want to do something with our church sign because right now it is pretty much out of order. So even 20 years from now, we might still be celebrating 100 years if we don't do something <laughs> soon. And, and there are still needs uh, to address over at the church parsonage as well. But let me make this one thing very, very clear this morning. Bless you. Even though our church building is showing signs of wear and tear, God did not bless us in such a way just so that we can make his house shine and look new. No, the mission of the church will always be what it has always been. And one of our precious children talked about it already. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very ends of the age. We exist to proclaim to this community that there is hope and there is salvation, and there is healing, and there is freedom in Jesus Christ. We are committed now more than ever to meet the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of the people around us, and to proclaim boldly, without fear or favor, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in this last day. We strive to enhance our current ministries, create new and effective ways to reach the lost. And listen here, we also strive to never again find ourselves in debt. So today, we look back at how far God has brought us. We look at his faithfulness, and we look at the many leaders and laity that have sacrificed, and we say, thank you. But I am convinced, and I believe, that the best is yet to come. And I'm encouraged and excited for what God has yet in store for his church. And while I do not know exactly what tomorrow holds, I do know this one thing. I know who holds tomorrow. And so today we celebrate the goodness and faithfulness of what the Lord has done. And there were so many who thought, certainly, that is a mountain too high to climb. It's an impossible amount. But we have once again not only been blessed by such faithful givers, but we have been shown how faithful God is and the fact that with man this really was impossible. But with God all things are possible. With that in mind, I do want to ask our ushers to come forward at this time to receive our morning tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Father, this morning, my heart is full overflowing already there's just something inspirational and powerful to hear our kids quote the word of God and then to give a few moments to celebrate what you have done for us I pray Lord that you would continue to honor the faithful that have gone before us and paved the way for us to be here this morning and for the many faithful who are now even seated in this room, who are still dedicated to praying for the lost, for giving of themselves in service of the kingdom, for offering their finances unto you, Lord. And we are in such a better spot this morning to be able to witness to this community and to meet the needs of the people around us and to take care of one another. And we owe everything to you. So we celebrate you today. I pray now as we give that you bless both the gift and the giver, for we give as our act of worship unto you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, amen. May God bless you as you give.
you guys stand as we continue to worship?
Jesus, you. 